Story of the Burning Field Once upon a time, there was an old man named Hamaguchi who lived in the country. He lives in a small house on the edge of a vast flat field on the mountainside. Behind the house is a towering mountain peak covered with trees. In front, the mountain slope slopes gently towards the sea. At the foot of the mountain, running along the coast, is a small village with more than a hundred thatched roofs and a large temple. One late summer afternoon, the old man sat on his balcony and watched everyone in the village below. Next to him is his grandson who has just turned ten years old. The villagers have had a good harvest and now they are celebrating the season festival. All the shops were closed, the streets were ornately decorated with straw and lanterns. The villagers wore colorful clothes to dance the seasonal dance. Looking away from the village, old man Hamaguchi saw the vast blue sea rippling under the afternoon sun. Suddenly there was a slight tremor. The house shook three or four times and then stood still. Having experienced many earthquakes in his life, he was not afraid at all until he looked out to sea. The sea water had turned dark black and the waves were fierce. The tide suddenly changed, the sea was running very quickly away from the land. The villagers stopped dancing and ran to the shore to look. None of them could explain this strange incident except the old man on the mountain. He had seen a similar scene when he was a boy. He knew what the other sea would do. There was an and hash 39. T enough time to send a message to the villagers or ring the big bell in the temple, but no matter what, the villagers had to know about it. And quat, yon and quat, he called to his young grandson, and quat, light me a torch quickly, and quat. The boy was confused but didn't and hash 39, T ask again. He lit the torch quickly. The old man ran to the field where hundreds of sheaves of rice were waiting to be sold. That is all his fortune. He lit the torch into the rice bundle after bundle. The dry rice caught fire very quickly and soon the red flames rose high, large columns of smoke rising into clouds in the sky. The boy Yon ran after him and cried, and quat, Grandpa, Grandpa. Why? Why are you burning rice? And quat, the old man did and then hash 39. T answer, just tried to run as fast as he could and lit the torch into one bunch of rice after another. Another sheaf of rice. The wind caught the embers of the fire, scattered the half-burning bundles and carried them further until the whole forest field was ablaze. The watchman on the temple saw the fire and rang the big bell to sound the alarm. At that time in Japan, everyone had to participate in putting out fires when there was a fire. So when the villagers saw Mr. Hamaguchi and Number 39's rice bundles on fire, they began to run for their lives. Like a group of ants, they climb up the mountain. Traditionally, Men, women, children, boys and girls, even children or women carrying children on their backs, must participate in fighting fires. But by the time they reached the field, it was too late. The fire burned down all the rice of the bumper crop. And quat, this is terrible, and quat, they shouted, and quat, why is this happening, and quat, and quat. My grandfather did it. And quat. The boy Yon sobbed. And quat. My grandfather did it. And quat. Use a torch to burn one bundle of rice after another. Your grandfather has gone crazy. And quat. The villagers stared at Hamaguchi in shock. And quat. You did that. And quat. And quat. You burned the entire rice field. And quat, and quat.
look at the sea, and quat. The old man said, and quat. You and number 39. LL, understand why when you see it. And quat. The villagers the village turned and looked. They saw in the distance a huge wall of water sweeping straight towards them faster than a bird could fly. It and number 39. S that see that and number 39. S coming back. People screamed but their voices were drowned out in a noise louder than thunder as the giant wall of water crashed against the cliff. The hills shook and were engulfed in foam. When the cloud of foam dissipated, the villagers saw that the sea had now engulfed the entire village. Huge angry waves roared and toppled the roofs of houses. They rotated and screamed tearing apart houses, carrying away trees and large rocks. The wall of water hit the mountainside again and again and gradually weakened until finally it stopped rising. Everyone stood dumbfounded on the mountainside. The village was gone, the temple was gone and the fields were reduced to ashes. Nothing remains except straw roofs floating on the water. But everyone, men, women and children, was safe on the mountainside. Everyone understood why old man Hamaguchi did what he did. And here he was standing among people who were as poor as them. With tears in their hearts, everyone knelt down to thank the kind old man. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.